in C Sharp, you can use the using directive to shorten a command. For example, instead of saying system.console.writeline, you can use the using system directive and then just call console.writeline. However, with .NET 8, we can now use the using keyword to alias any type, allowing us to make our code clearer and cleaner. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology. But sometimes, you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10-minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. Now, here I have a Windows 8 pro or .NET 8 project that is um, just a console application. We have a console write line that's hello world there. That will run just as is. Now, this is a little bit deceptive because of the fact we have no using directives. Because of the fact, let's go to our project here, we can see the implicit usings is turned on. So let's turn that off for now. So we can see what's actually happening here. Because right now, we have an error, even though before we didn't. That's because we console does not exist in the current context. What we really need is to have a using directive for system. So what this does is it allows us to shortcut this command. If we did not have this using directive, the real command would be system.console.writeline. Now, um, just to be clear here, we're not importing any libraries like you might with other languages. This is just a shortcut. That's all a using directive is, it's a shortcut. So we can shortcut this command instead of typing everything out every time, we can shortcut it by adding the using directive. This does not hurt or change performance or anything else, it's just a shortcut. So don't feel like having too many using directives is a problem. In most cases, the only issue would be is if you're stepping on the toes of you know, having two different um, libraries that have the same method name in them, well then you could cause some conflicts. But the, the editor will tell you when that happens. So with this, we know how to use these. We've, we've used these a lot as C Sharp developers, if you've done C Sharp development for any time at all. But we do have a more recent feature, which is we add a using directive for a static, and so say system.console, like so. And what that allows us to do is add a using directive essentially for system.console, even though console is the class, which means we can now do this and just say write line because we're using this using directive here that um, is for static classes. So that makes things a little shorter and neater if you wanted to use it. I don't particularly find that I use it very often, but it is there. And that's one of the things that we need to make sure we remember is sometimes people say, oh, there's too many options, there's too many options. Options are a good thing, okay? You don't have to use options. You don't have to even necessarily know about all the options, although it's probably, probably good you do, um, because of the fact that you can do things the way that works best for you, but you have choices. When you don't have choices, you're locked into one way of doing things, and that does not fit a world where things are different all over. So this is there in case you decide you like this, but there's a new thing, and this is called an alias, where we can add a using and say, you know what, um, let's just come down here for a minute and pretend for a minute that I need to um, create a tuple. Maybe, um, maybe let's create a, a simple tuple. This is a demo example, um, but let's just say I say string, first name, string, last name, and then I say, um, I don't know, uh, test, like so, and now I can say name equals Tim, and name equals Corey, right? So that'd be a tuple, and typically use tuples when you're sending data back from methods, because a method by default sends back one value. But maybe return value needs to be more than one value, and you don't want to go as far as creating a class for it. It's just returning a couple of pieces of information. Well, we could return a tuple, and we can declare it or not. But this is a this is a lot to declare, and sometimes you might want to use this more than once. Maybe we're calling that method more than once, 
and we want to declare this more than once. That's a lot. But with this new alias type, we can say using person equals string first name, string last name, like so. And now instead of this, we could say person. And now everything works the same way except the fact that we have aliased at the top of our method what this tuple will look like and give it a name. And you may say, well, Tim, that's awful close to just declaring a class or a record and then using that. And yes, that's true. It's awful close. It's not the same thing, but it's awful close. And so why do we have that? Because of the fact that what they're trying to provide for us here is a gradient rather than a yes or a no. Instead of having just, you know, just string and just, you know, then on the other side, just a class and having this, you know, really big object versus the really tiny object, we've now got different levels in between that allow us to figure out what size of object we need and what, um, what level of, you know, maintainability we need of this object for our particular use case. Maybe you're just using this tuple a couple of times in one class file. Well, then declaring it as a, as a named tuple will allow you to, you know, use it in that one class file without having to create and maintain a new class or a new record. And it's just persistent inside this one class file. It's not persistent outside of it, which just makes things easy. So this alias type allows us a few more options when it comes to uh, working with and make with working our code and making it readable. So how much do I use this? Well, personally, like I said, I don't use the static that often. I prefer to see console.writeline versus just write line. But there are cases where it makes sense. If you're doing a, um, in this particular example, we're using uh, static system.console, well, if you're doing a class that does a lot of writing to the console, a lot of work with the console, well, then it makes sense to have that static because you know it's write line and read line and you know beep or whatever else you want to do the console, but you don't have to type that over and over and over again where it becomes confusing. However, if you find that reading down through, you read write line and go, wait, what's write line? Over and over, well then don't do that. Make it console.write line. Um, so again, I don't use this a ton. And using system, of course I use using directives all the time. Using directives are super helpful. They make your code much, much more readable. Um, but this last one, the alias in any type, how often do I use it? At this point, not a lot. But again, it's the option I have, which allows me to say, hey, I'm using this tuple or I'm using something else uh, multiple times. I'm gonna go ahead and just declare at the top and give it a name so it's a little clearer. And you might even say, you know, uh, person tuple. That way it's a little clearer what this is um, in your declaration. And again, it's only, this only lives inside of this one class declaration it doesn't live across your entire application, which can be very helpful for not polluting your application with a whole bunch of stuff that's not necessary. So again, this is another option that's now available in .NET 8, this alias type. Um, the using static came about in, I believe, .NET 6. Um, so anyways, I thought you should at least know about it, try it out, and figure out maybe there's a situation or two that might be useful for you to use this new alias type. Thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.